signs of the culture wars. It's time for the Line of Fire with your host, biblical scholar and cultural commentator, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice for moral sanity and spiritual clarity. Call 866-34-TRUTH to get on the Line of Fire. And now, here's your host, Dr. Michael Brown. You know, if, if anyone has a reason to be discouraged, down, hopeless, pessimistic, it would be someone like me who's engaged in the culture wars, who's writing numerous articles and talking daily on the radio about what's happening in the culture around us, who's getting bombarded with every day, have you seen this, have you seen this, the latest bad news, terrible news, look at this is wrong, that's wrong. However, I am overflowing with encouragement. Number one, because as a child of God, I know if God is for us, no one can be against us. Number two, because in front of my eyes, I see the tide is changing. The tide is shifting. Something is happening in America. So today, as you listen to the line of fire, friends, as a new listener or a longtime listener, you will be infused with faith and truth and courage. The faith and truth and courage that are in my heart will be infused into yours as you listen with open heart, open mind. If you'd like to weigh in, or you have a question you'd like to ask me, the number to call is 866-34-TRUTH, 866-348-7884. And if you have a different perspective, I always love to have my perspective challenged in a friendly and honest and open way. Okay, first, let, let's start with Scripture. Let, let me just bathe you in what the Word of God says. Let me read to you from Romans, the eighth chapter. Many of you have heard these verses many times, even memorized some. But let, let's hear them afresh. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he call also called, he also justified, those whom he justified, he also glorified. And by the way, without getting into a debate about predestination, election, what it means, breathe in the sovereign God who has a plan and he is carrying it out and we are in his hands, in his chosen destiny as we surrender our lives to him. And then he continues, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Whoa. What verse is Romans 8, 28 to 39? I work with believers around the world, many of them in persecuted countries, difficult countries, countries where they risk their lives living for Jesus. And what I found in these countries and among these believers is a great sense of victory, of overcoming faith, of the reality of eternity. E even death itself has lost its sting. Just got a note from, from precious believers, lifelong missionaries in, in Italy, living sacrificially for decades to bring the gospel to the lost. Just w wonderful frontline people and their precious daughter, grown woman herself, just passed away of cancer. We've been praying for her. They've been sending me updates. They sent me a message today. She's in the arms of her Lord. And obviously there's the agony of the loss, but, but death loses its sting. And, and those of you who've lived through it as believers know that even in death for a believer, there's a sense of ultimate victory and comfort and assurance that, that eases some of the sting and the pain and gives you that hope of, of, of reunion forever and ever and ever. So, we can be encouraged simply by the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And if we're in right relationship with him, we have eternal life and we'll be with God forever and ever and ever. And God is working out his plan in us and through us 
whether it looks good in this world or has trouble in this world, he's at work. And if God's for us, who can be against us? So that alone is, is enough reason to carry us with eternal encouragement. I also want to say, though, as someone on the front lines of the culture wars, someone who's, who's hated and maligned and blacklisted on the front lines of the culture wars, which I say with a sense of honor, not with a sense of complaint in any way at all. It's, it's my honor to bear reproach, be lied about, be misrepresented for the gospel. But as someone on the front lines of the culture wars, I can tell you that things that are happening that are positive, that, that, that the tide is changing. Oh, I don't mean all of America is going in the right direction. Far from it. And there are radical elements that are getting more radical by the day and attacks on our freedoms and attacks on fundamental values to us. They are at an all time high. I'm not minimizing that for a split second. I'm still shouting out at the top of my lungs. It's revival or we die. We must have a national great awakening where America, as we know it, is doomed at the same time as for almost 20 years now. We've been talking about what's coming in the culture and where things are going and what to expect. We've also been telling you there is going to be a holy pushback. There is going to be a gospel-based moral and cultural revolution. And what's happening now, it's, it's not just among followers of Jesus, among Bible believers. It's happening on a wider level that more and more people are pushing back. More and more people are saying enough is enough. In fact, I'm going to play a, a clip from Joe Rogan. So the famous podcaster, you may know him in other circles, Joe Rogan, but, you know, massive audience. But if we did word association, if I said Michael Jordan, you think basketball. If I said Tiger Woods, you think golf. If I say Joe Rogan, you don't think Bible, right? He's, he's not a born again Bible even Christian. But people like Joe Rogan, just common sense weighing in saying people are saying enough is enough. So let me give you some encouraging examples from the front lines of the culture wars. I'm going to start with an article published June 8th by Jeffrey Jones on Gallup.com. So George Gallup, pollster, right? Their organization. Social conservatism in U.S. highest in about a decade. Social conservatism highest in about a decade. And then you look down at, at some of the, the charts. Oh, let's see here, for example, American liberal conservative self-identification on social issues, that, that those who are identifying as, as very liberal, more liberal, they're on the decline, right, down to 29%. Those identifying as, as very conservative, conservative, they're on, they're on the incline up to 38%. And there's some profound switches, I mean, actual shifts from one to another. A social issue ideology by political party, uh, 2021 to 2023. Uh, so in, in, in 2021, 60% of Republicans identified as very conservative slash conservative. Today, it's 74%. Among independents, 24% identified as conservative, very conservative. Now it's 29%. Democrats, that's remained the same. All right. So there has been a radicalizing of the Democrat Party. Like people say, it's not the party of this would be Bill Clinton's party, right? That's changed. Uh, changes in self-identification as conservative on social issues by age, 2021 to 2023. Here's what's really interesting. Among 65 plus years old, right? It's actually going down 1%. Among those 18 to 29 years old, so becoming more conservative, very conservative, it's gone up by six percentage points, just from 2021 to 2023. 30 to 49 years old, it's gone up by 13 points. 50 to 64 years old, up by 11 points. The same with economic conservatism. Now it's 44% of Americans would identify as conservative or very conservative compared to 21% saying liberal, very liberal. And on and on it goes. Uh, bottom line, for most of the past eight years, Americans were about as likely to say they were liberal as conservative on social issues. This year, there is a more obvious conservative advantage. The tide is turning. Why? Because people have seen the direction things are going. Attacks on family, attacks on gender ideology, attacks on religious liberties. Things just going to extremes they didn't sign up for. They saying, this is not working. This is not pragmatic. Some of these radical policies that are being addressed and, and being advocated are just not helpful. 
Uh, here's, a, uh, again, based from the survey, further information. Article in the Daily Caller by James Lynch, the left's mass deception about gender is completely failing. Major new study reveals. So look at this chart here from interactive polls. In the past several years, views have shifted on gender identities, percentage who say there are only two genders. In 2021, it was 59% who said there are only two genders. Today, just two years later, it's 65%. People say, well, what, do you, what, is, what do you mean? Multiple genders? What are you talking about? Of course, only two genders. More and more people recognizing that, right? So the more bombarded we are, the more it goes in the other direction. Now, look at this. Uh, among uh, in, in the GOP, uh, so Republicans say 90%. That's up 3% from 2021. Independents now 66% recognize only two genders. That's up 6%. Democrats, that's at 44%, right? That's up 6%. And look at this, Gen Z. It's, it's now at 57%, an increase of 14% in just two years. Did you get that? Gen Z. So, so let's just say 18 to 25, you know, roughly, they, they'd be in the polling, okay? A 14% shift in just two years to saying, of course, there are only two genders. Now, it's a shame that it's what it is, 57%, not 100%. But, but the fact of the matter is, the more the bombardment, the more the insanity, the more you have, you have one website with 78 preferred gender pronouns that you can pick from, the more that you have biological males competing with females in sports and beating them time in and time out and smashing records and depriving women of, of their hard-earned efforts and, and rewards, the more people say, wait, th this is crazy. Care I care about everyone struggling. We should care about everyone who struggles, everyone who's confused. And those who differ with us then aren't our enemies. Satan's the enemy. He wants to destroy all of us. But things are happening. Eyes are opening. Things are changing. Why? As we've said for years, the radical left will overplay its hand. The pushback is here. Oh, I've got a bunch more to say. In fact, I'm going to play a clip from Joe Rogan for you in a little while. So stay right here. We are just getting started. And give a good listen to this word from our co-sponsor, Trivita. I personally enjoy these supplements. They add to my vibrant health. Check them out for yourself. Chronic inflammation is the greatest health threat to humanity. Infections, injuries, toxins, poor diet, and chronic stress can attack your immune system and lead to chronic inflammation. But now there's a solution you can fight this dangerous silent killer with. Nopalea, made from the superfruit of the Nepal cactus, containing a unique group of bioflavonoids clinically shown to reduce chronic inflammation. In a random, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, it showed a reduction of elevated, at-risk C-reactive protein levels, resulting in an improvement in range of motion in the back, neck, and joints, and an overall improvement in the quality of life. Nopalea has helped thousands of people by lowering levels of chronic inflammation. Let's hear what customers are saying. I'm a personal trainer and owner of three gyms. Super excited, doing a renovation in here, bringing new equipment in. And as I was bringing the new equipment in, I was trying to move a piece. I moved, the equipment didn't move, and I injured myself severely. So it was frustrating. It was, it was really depressing. I wasn't able to work out. I wasn't able to train. I wasn't able to do just normal daily functions. After taking Nopalea, I found that it really helped with my recovery, not only with my severe injury in my back, but it also helped in my recovery of my workouts. Nopalea has helped thousands of people by lowering levels of chronic inflammation. To place your order, call 800-771-5584 or online at Trivita.com. As a new customer introductory offer, use promo code BROWN25 for a 25% discount on your purchase of Nopalea. And of your first order will go to the support of Line of Fire. Go to Trivita.com or call 800-771-5584. Again, 800-771-5584.
It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on the Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Thank you for joining us on the Line of Fire. Uh, Let me be as clear as I can. Number to call 866-34-TRUTH, especially if you see the tide turning where you are. Uh, Go ahead. Give us a call. Maybe in your business, place of business, or in your school, or in your church, your congregation, people rising up. Give us a call. 866-34-TRUTH. I want to be as clear as I can. It does not make me happy that there are people saying hateful things to those who identify as LGBTQ. I mean, genuinely hateful things. We can differ in love. We can preach the truth in love. We can push back against an agenda that we find dangerous in love. And there are other things that that are hateful, that are nasty, that are mean-spirited. That gives me no joy whatsoever. In fact, it grieves me because it drives people away from Jesus. By all means, we must speak the truth in love, however difficult it is and however painful that truth may be. But it must be done with genuine love and with a real heart to see people know God and receive forgiveness. It grieves me when I see believers in church damning one group while we ourselves have enough sins in our own midst and don't recognize the damage that we have brought to society by the compromise in our midst. I've said for many years that no fault divorce in the church has done more damage to marriage than all gay activists combined. Uh, It grieves me that scandals in the church have driven people away from Jesus. So I'm not one gloating over pushing back against a radical agenda from some you know, high ivory tower. I'm one saying, hey, we're in this together. We're here as fellow Americans. And the question is, what's best for the nation? What's best for the next generation? What's best for human thriving? We're convinced that God's ways are best. We're convinced that what's in scripture is best. And because of that, and of genuine love, we're going to reach out. And what does it mean when we reach out to those we differ with? What does it mean? Well, it, it means you start with people right where they are. You know, there, there's a, an old friend I've been interacting with, haven't been in touch in decades, probably well over 40 years. And we got saved around the same time, knew each other as believers for a few years, then lost touch. Then I found out he was in a gay relationship and had been in one for many years. And I think he and his partner adopted a, a daughter, etc. And we renewed contact recently. And he had been a little reluctant, not knowing what the contact would look like and feel like because of the fact that he knows where I stand on these issues and he considers himself a believer. And we begun to interact and what he gets from me is unconditional love and what a joy it is to hear from him. And one of these days we'll have a long talk and we'll talk through issues honestly and want to hear his story and his own journey and etc. He knows exactly where I stand. There's no ambiguity in it, in his mind. And what he meets with me is great love. And when I hear from him, I'm thrilled to hear from him. And, and we talk as old friends. Why? Be, why? Because that's the heart of God. That's the heart of God. So as, as I talk about shifts coming and tides turning, this is not, well, you terrible sinners out there, you're all going down and God's going to raise us Christians up. No, it's a matter of we know God's ways are best. We know his ways are best, and that's why we stand for them and advocate for them in this democratic republic here in America and vote and do what we can to show people that God's ways are best. All right, so article from Alison Sullivan, not familiar with her writing until now. Alison Sullivan, and this was published on msn.com. This Pride Month, the story says, ordinary Americans rise against extremes a, recheck, a rejection of unchecked gender fluidity. And the article says this, this Pride Month, so June, it seems as though a wind of change is blowing across America. Instead of the usual flamboyance, a more subdued and thoughtful air is taking hold. It's what some might call the revolt of the normies, as in normal people. A pushback against the perceived extreme expressions of gender fluidity. She says this, Uh, I'm going to skip down a little bit. The entire Bud Light fiasco altered the idea of go woke or go broke, just an empty saying. No, it's true, right? Um, Explaining what's happened to Bud Light, what happened to Target. 
And, and then, then she says this, the backlash against gender fluidity isn't con- confined to consumers. Some Major League Baseball stars publicly criticized the Dodgers for their endorsement of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Indulgence. And there's growing opposition to anatomical males participating in women's sports. She says the term normies or traditional middle class Americans is now being used to describe the growing number of people voicing their disapproval of the extremes. For decades, the boundaries for individual expression and self-definition have expanded. Americans have generally been tolerant of this evolution, showing an acceptance of what was once considered deviant traits. However, the recent push for unrestricted gender fluidity differs from previous liberation movements. It seems to call for complete denial of innate human nature and demands uniform acceptance of this radical concept. Instead of seeking tolerance or privacy, the new transgender movement insists on breaking every societal and institutionary boundary from bathrooms to sports to elementary classrooms. At the heart of the issue of the question is the question of what's appropriate for children. There's growing resistance to exposing young minds to, quote, drag queen exhibitions and aggressive medical interventions. These practices have recently been severely restricted in Europe, and I might add very progressive Europe. And she closes with this. Opinion polls indicate that the majority of Americans oppose the basic premises of gender fluidity. This shift in sentiment could be seen as the revolt of the normies. If American institutions continue to indulge in such extremes, they may learn that sometimes Pride Month can indeed that, that in, they may learn that sometimes Pride Month can indeed goeth before the fall. So this is this is a secular publication, friends. This was this was not on a Bible-based website. This was not just on a conservative website. This was MSN.com just publishing a wide range of articles, but certainly none that would be perceived as gay bashing. And here she's saying it is the revolt of the normies. It's your average mom and dad, your average person, your average Bud Light drinker, your average Target consumer just saying enough is enough. People embrace common decency, love their neighbor as their self. Okay, we should be more accepting, more loving, not judging people. You know, people say okay to that. They embrace common decency. What they ended up with was the celebration of deviancy. And they said, this is not what we signed up for. Friends, if you've listened to me for years, you've known we have told you for years this was coming. The overturning of Roe v. Wade, another big step last year. We, we dubbed last year the year of pushing back, the year of taking back ground. So here we are now. And, and the secular press, the secular media is talking about it. We come back. I want to play this, this clip for you from Joe Rogan. Not time to do it now. But what I see is really significant in, in the midst of this. What I see is really significant is the shift with really young people. So we don't have polls with under 18. But, but the younger generation, Gen Z, which had been so radicalized and, and raised with such a different mentality... It kind of raised with the mentality of you always show solidarity to those who identify as gay and trans. And, hey, a good way for you to do that is identify as gay or queer or bi or trans yourself. That so many have been raised with that. But as, as they themselves see where things are going and the confusion that it's brought and the nonsense some were taught as little kids, you could be a boy one day, a girl the next, or both, or neither. And you live your life like that. It's not working. It's not working. And then those that are maybe... Millennials a little bit past as well, that are they're raising kids now. And, and they have to deal with real life. And, and on that front, their views are shifting to become more conservative. We've generally seen this over the years, but the shift now is very significant in these specific ways. And what's at the root of it? People have been praying. People have been praying. And we've been advocating that God's ways are best and, and that he set things up a certain way for a certain reason. We will be right back. Oh, i, I got to tell you about tomorrow's show and a movie that I play a role in. We'll, we'll get to that shortly. Hey, 
Hey friends, this is Dr. Michael Brown. I want to invite you to join our support team, make an investment of $1 a day that will absolutely last forever. You know, the Lord has given us a holy mandate to blanket America with the line of fire broadcast. And on a regular basis, we hear from folks writing in, Dr. Brown, I used to be a practicing homosexual. I listened to you. I heard grace and truth together. I was changed. We hear from pastors who say, thank you for speaking with compassion, but giving us backbone and courage. And we know across America, so many believers are getting healthy and strong through listening to the broadcast, through listening to these messages as we, we tackle the controversies, the most difficult issues of the day. We even hear from former Muslims who've come to faith, from Jewish people who now believe in Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, through this broadcast and our resources. So join our support team. One dollar or more per day makes you an official torchbearer. Immediately, you will get access to hundreds of hours of terrific online classes and exclusive video content. Every single month, we'll send you a brand new audio message and along with it, an insider prayer newsletter where we'll talk about the things that are going to be coming in our ministry and share some of the amazing testimonies of the fruit that you are a part of. And when you do sign up, I want to give you two books as a special gift. First, Compassionate Father or Consuming Fire. Who is the God of the Old Testament? I, I take the best of my Hebrew and Old Testament scholarship, wrap it together in this book that you'll find eye-opening, answering many of the questions you have. And then Revolution, my classic book that tells you how to wage war the Jesus way, overcoming evil with good, overcoming hatred with love. We are transformed. We can bring transformation to the nation. So call this number now, 800-538-5275. That's 800 800- 538-5275, say, I'd like to become a torchbearer, or go to askdrbrown.org. Click on Donate Monthly Support. It's The Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on The Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Welcome back, friends, to The Line of Fire. Hey, can I welcome you to our support team? Would you take a step today to join us on the front lines of the culture wars, representing you with grace, with truth, with truth, not with truth, not truth with the enemy, but with truth, standing together as one. Let me be your voice for moral sanity and spiritual clarity as we hold your hands up on the front lines where you are and bring a voice to the nation. You can join our support team by calling 800-538-5275, a dollar a day. Best investment you could make, a dollar a day. You would get eternal rewards and you'll see amazing fruit in this world as together we make a difference on the front lines. I want to send you those two books as my gift to you, Revolution and Compassion Father or Consuming Fire, Who is the God of the Old Testament, a new audio message every month, 15% discount in our online bookstore, discount if you join us on an Israel trip and then hundreds of of free video resources, classes that we make available as well. So check it out for yourself. You can go to askdrbrown.org, askdrbrown.org, click on donate and then monthly support. Thank you. And all of you that stand with us, thank you. You have helped us touch millions of lives over the years and you will share in the reward. 866-34-TRUTH. Let's go back to some articles where folks in the world or just general commentators are talking about a shift that's coming, changes that are coming. And before I get into some of these articles, and then I've, I've got just some really edifying uh, audio clips to play for you. If you're watching, you'll see video uh, from some uh, female players, Oklahoma uh, softball team, college softball team, just won their third straight national championship. You, you want to talk about being edified and courage. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's listen to what Joe Rogan had to say. Of course, we had to bleep out uh, a, a lot of it. Uh, but listen to what he had to say. Just common sense. Why people are saying enough already with all this craziness in the society. The craziness, I'm not talking about people. People that are struggling need our help, need our love, need our compassion, need our understanding. I'm talking about the craziness of the social agenda. Listen to what Joe Rogan has to say. Target lost billions of dollars because they tried to have this pride 
selection. Oh yeah, gay mannequins. Yeah, they they well they had all these like pride children's shirts yeah. and gay children. Yeah, yeah. and then Sorry. obviously the Bud Light thing with Dylan Mulvaney. They've lost twenty plus billion dollars. You imagine, you just gonna send a can to some confused person. That uh, day 365 of womanhood, and you send that person a f can with their face on, and your company loses $20 billion. That is wild, man. So we're seeing that now, yeah. where we never saw that before, where people are going, enough. Right. Enough. Stop shoving this down everybody's throat. When I go to Target, I don't want to see, like tuck pants where you like they're designed to help you tuck your like hey that's not normal and i don't want that right in front of everybody that's okay friends that's joe rogan that was not franklin graham okay it was joe rogan i don't say that to condemn joe rogan i'm, I'm simply saying he's he's not a bible waving it's all about jesus and what's in the bible and 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 homosexuals are going to hell okay he's not this is just joe rogan one of the, quote, normies in that regard, you know, beer-drinking, pot-smoking, famous podcaster, comedian, mixed martial arts commentator, etc. He, he's saying what many others are saying. This is crazy. More and more people are recognizing the emperor has no clothes. So I, I was uh, upstate New York a few years ago. I may have mentioned this on the air recently. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I was speaking at a conference for several hundred pastors, leaders, uh, one denomination, one district. And the, the brother driving me worked with IBM. And he said, you know, we're, we're going through, and he's, he's close to my age, I imagine. He's probably in his 60s. And he was talking about they're, they're having their introduction and going through certain things in one of their, their corporate meetings. And they're explaining, you know, the gender pronouns and the bathroom use. And a man can, if I identify as a woman, can use the... But and just the more he was going on, he said, the emperor has no clothes. And you're wondering why everyone in the room just doesn't stand up and say, it's time out, time out. What are you talking about? This is not real. This is not real. It, it's like the, the PragerU video where guys on college campuses asking, is it wrong, you know, blackface, where a white person puts you know, shoe polish or something on their face to look black. You know, this was done acting, Al Jolson, people like that in the past. And, and now, okay, well, what about someone like Rachel Dolezal, who genuinely believes she was born in the wrong body, so she tries to look like an African-American and presented herself as an African-American, even was, you know, involved in civil rights for African-Americans, only to be exposed as she's actually Caucasian. So, well, that's wrong. Okay, so it's wrong to say that you were born in the wrong body as far as race. What about biology in, in terms of sex? Is it wrong to say you're born in the, you know, a, a man born in a woman's body or a woman born in a man's body? Oh, no, no, that's different. That's different than race. Well, why is it different than race? It's not any different than race. It's not. <clears throat> but, you know, people's unwillingness to think or inability to think on this is, as they start to think, they're saying, okay. This, this is a little extreme, right? I, yeah, I, I, I wanted to embrace, you know, my, my cousin is gay and he likes another guy and they're getting married. I, I want to be able to embrace that and say love is love, but I, I didn't sign up for this other stuff or drag queens with little kids. It seems weird to me. More and more Americans are saying that. Here's another article. New York Post, Chadwick Moore, who would identify as a, quote, gay conservative, and it's called why LGBTs are running out of pride. This is New York Post. Uh, at a downtown Tempe, Arizona pride party earlier this month, a drag queen encouraged the crowd to register to vote so that they may, quote, turn the tide on all the hate and anti-gay nonsense in the state house in Florida, the United States. The all ages event also featured speeches by Democratic officials and a gay rapper who performed a song about a sex act. Video shows plenty of small children were present. That same weekend at West Hollywood, California's family-friendly pride celebration, video circulated of two men performing a public sex act in broad daylight on a float in the parade. The next day, a drag performer dedicated to mocking and disparaging Christians was honored at the state capitol in Sacramento. 
shocking as it continues to be, none of this seems especially uncharacteristic for June in the U.S., where Pride events have become increasingly demented, offensive, and tied to wacky far-left politics inspired by critical queer theory, critical race theory's genderless stepchild. And, and he goes on, this is, this is someone who identifies as a gay conservative. People say, oh, we didn't sign up for the mutilating of children and chemical castration of children. We didn't sign up for this. So again, let me quote, uh, he says this, plenty has happened in the seven years since I was guillotined for coming out of the closet as a gay conservative. Whereas in 2016, only a handful seemingly existed. Today, thousands of LGBT influencers cram social media feeds as part of a gathering wave rejecting the far left. The result has been the alphabet mob's nosedive into madness. But of course, it's the only way it could go. It's the way it had to go. It's the inevitable trajectory. Here, think of it like this. Take truth, right? God established in Genesis 1, everything reproduces after its kind. So take truth. Multiply truth over, 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 over and over and over infinitely. What do you get? Lots of truth. Take love. Multiply it over and over and over and over because it's a good virtuous thing. And real love, right? And, and what do you get? Boundless, endless love. Take, uh, let's just take something like bitterness. Bitterness. Multiply that. What do you get? You get anger. You get hatred. You get murder. You get suicide. You get, you get all kinds of terrible things that self-destruct because the thing itself is bad. Or, or, or take, uh, take sexual immorality. Right? Just fornication, sexual immorality. Multiply that, you end up with every imaginable and even unimaginable perversion. And it gets sicker and crazier and sicker and crazier. And people that, that have fallen into hardcore porn and come out of it will tell you that stuff is sicker than you could even imagine. And yet there's a market for it. And, and including other things unspeakable, not even want to even suggest talking about those, but with the abuse of children and on and on and on. So that's what happens when you deviate from the path. When you deviate from male, female, he created them, you end up with infinite number of genders, gender expressions, gender pronouns, and L. Here, I think 1999, President Clinton says, gay, gay pride month, June, lesbian and gay pride month, June. When President Obama reinforces that during his presidency, what is it? It's not, it's not Gay and Lesbian Pride Month. It's LGBT, right? Because it's expanded. Now under President Biden, it's LGBTQI+. And, and over the weekend, pride flag for transgenderism at the White House displayed. This is something to be celebrated. And again, in the words of gay conservative Chadwick Moore, Whereas in 2016, only a handful seemingly existed. Today, thousands of LGBT influencers cram social media feeds as part of a gathering wave rejecting the far left. The result has been the alphabets, alphabet mobs, so speaking of LGBTQ, IP, et cetera, nosedive into madness. The, the problem for Chadwick Moore, and I respect him saying this, and I respect his, his conservative stance on all this, conservative on a certain level, right? It's, it's, it's inevitable fruit of, of where it started with gay and lesbian activism. It's an inevitable fruit. And the gay pride events, which are becoming more demented, they started more demented. And, and then others said, hey, this is not good PR for us, right? Some gay activists said, this is not good PR. We need to police ourselves better because this looks bad for, for the general world, seeing the, the worst excesses of our movement. And others began to just say, hey, well, this does not represent our community as a whole, and we shouldn't have it. It's just the fringe. And others now starting to adopt children or have children, raise children, saying, you know, we're not happy with this either. But now, look, the, the camel got its toe in the tent. The rest of the camel's coming. This is what happens. More and more Americans are saying enough is enough. In fact, we come back, I'll tell you about something very striking from the Human Rights Campaign, the world's largest gay activist organization. 
And then right after that, I want to tell you about tomorrow's show and the movie that I'm in. Yeah, and then play these uh, clips for you that are really edifying and encouraging. Stay right here. Nopalea has helped thousands of people by lowering levels of chronic inflammation. I really enjoy being physical. It's something I've just always loved, but I've definitely had times where it's really crippled me up. Being a horse trainer can be pretty physically demanding with all the duties that I have, not just riding horses for a living, saddling horses, caring for the horses. I feel like no playa just took the edge off and then it's it's continued to keep me from getting sore. No playa, it's been a huge blessing. Now there's a solution by lowering levels of chronic inflammation. Nopalea, made from the superfruit of the Nepal cactus, containing a unique group of bioflavonoids clinically shown to reduce chronic inflammation. In a random double-blind placebo-controlled study, it showed a reduction of elevated at-risk C-reactive protein levels, resulting in an improvement in range of motion in the back, neck, and joints and an overall improvement in the quality of life. It's fun to be on the golf course again. I'm able to swing the club freely. Hopefully I'm hitting better golf shots. No play has allowed me to get back on the golf course, enjoy the game that I love, and maybe even give me that little edge to beat my friends at the game. Nopalea has helped thousands of people by lowering levels of chronic inflammation. To place your order, call 800-771-5584 or online at Trivita.com. As a new customer introductory offer, use promo code BROWN25 for a 25% discount on your purchase of Nopalea. And 100% of your first order will go to the support of Line of Fire. Go to Trivita.com or call 800-771-5584. Again, 800-771-5584. It's The Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on The Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. I really want to encourage you to check out these Trivita supplements. So I'm going to talk to you later this month about how God helped me make a life transformation with diet and, and all that. That's the bottom line. And I really want to encourage you with that and inspire you, hopefully, with my own story. Because if God can do it for me... A lifelong unhealthy eater, he, he'd do it for anybody. But these Trivita supplements have really been a blessing to me physically as well, and a blessing to all of you because they enable us with your generous donations to reach more people. So call 800-771-5584. Check out No Play. I, I take it regularly, joyfully, with, with great results. 800-771-5584. Tell them Dr. Brown sent you. Or Trivita.com. Use the code Brown. 25 for your special discount and for 100% of your first order to be donated to the line of fire. Okay, look at these headlines. Just some more headlines here. Um, this was on The Blaze. It says this, parents livid over pride video shown to third, fourth, fifth graders in which child says, I never really felt like a boy and I don't really feel like a girl, so I'd rather be both. Parents are finding out what's happening more in the schools. A lot of this happened because of COVID saying, not on our watch, not in our school, no, not our kids. Thank God. Thank God they are. And then Human Rights Campaign, world's largest gay activist organization, very influential for many years now, first time in their history. This is their own headline, Human Rights Campaign, hrc.org. For the first time ever, Human Rights Campaign officially declares state of emergency for LGG, LGBTQ plus Americans issues national warning and guidebook to ensure safety for LGBTQ plus residents and travelers. Okay, so the headline is completely over, overblown in terms of safety, completely overblown. And for, for any people, especially those claiming to be Christians, who threaten the physical well-being of a gay, lesbian, trans person, you're, you're going to hurt them, you're going to attack them, if they come in their community, you're going to do them violence. I, I utterly denounce that 
that is 100% foreign to the spirit of God and the spirit of the New Testament in terms of how we are called to live and the righteous way that we resist that which we believe to be wrong. I want to say that as clear as I can. As for laws being passed in state after state protecting children from surgical intervention in their lives, from genital mutilation, from chemical castration, from irreversible things done, done to kids that cannot possibly fully understand the implications of them at that young age. For laws being passed against those things, I absolutely say wonderful amen. For books that should not be read by little children, for those books or older children, for that matter, in schools being pulled from libraries, I applaud those decisions as well these sexually inappropriate books, these, these books with radical gender ideology and on and on and critical queer theory and whatever else you want to call it. I'm glad those are being rejected. And I'm glad people are pushing back to the point that human rights campaign must declare state of emergency. What I want to say to everyone listening who identifies as LGBTQ is you are not my enemy. You are not my enemy. If you were my neighbor, I would do my best to get to know you. I would do my best to be a good neighbor. I would do my best to show a genuine interest in your well-being. And yes, if we talked, you'd find out exactly where I stood and why I believe what I believe according to Scripture. If you claim to be, quote, a, a gay Christian and here's your gay Christian partner, I'd have a very candid talk with you. I'd give you my book, Can You Be Gay and Christian, if you wanted to read it. Read what you want me to read, have discussion, but I'd still love you. You are not my enemy. And if, and if someone, you know, came in front of your house and burned a gay flag in front of you and threatened you, they, they would have to stand up to me. I would be the first to call the police uh, if I saw it, and I would confront them face to face if I was able to, and I would protect you. At the same time, believing what the Word of God says plainly. We can walk in love and have radically different viewpoints about many, many different things and deep, deep convictions that are different. So I'm glad to see the pushing back. And that's probably all I'm going to say about it this entire week, just today, because we packed a lot in. And I've got a new article coming out. of. Uh, make sure you're getting my articles at AskDrBrown.org. If not, just sign up today, ASKDRBrown.org. Send up for our emails, and we'll be sure to send them to you. But God is at work. The tide is turning, just as we said it would for years, friends. Be encouraged. Okay. With that, I do not follow college baseball. I do not follow college softball. So I was unaware that the Oklahoma team, Oklahoma, where they won. And wow, 53 straight games. Who can imagine that? And as, as sports commentators have said, who, what team comes in ready every day for that many games? You can have ups and downs. So a reporter, ESPN, is, is airing this, and this is, ESPN is not gospel preaching, in case you're not familiar uh, with the sports network, which would espouse many, many radically liberal causes. So uh, ESPN, the question is asked about, you know, how do you, how do you keep this going? So uh, I'm going to play this in three different clips because it's three different young ladies that are there. I think there are four total, three different ones answered. Listen to these answers. Alex Scarborough with ESPN, for, for the players, I know you talked about keeping the joy of the game, but I'm curious, it's a long season, right? And you guys have had the target on your back the entire time, the win streak being number one. How do you handle the unique pressure that comes with that? How do you keep the joy for so long when anxiety seems like a thing that could very easily set in? Well, the only way that you can have a joy that doesn't fade away is from the Lord. And any other type of joy is actually happiness that comes from circumstances and outcomes. And um, I think Coach has said this before, but joy from the Lord is really the only thing that can keep you motivated, um, uh, just in a good mindset, uh, no matter the outcomes. Thankfully, we've had a lot of success this year, but if it was the other way around, uh, joy from the Lord is the only thing that can keep you embracing those memories, moments, friendships, and all of that. So uh, I would, that's really the only, the only answer to that because there's no other way that softball can bring you that um, because of how much failure comes in it and just how much of a roller coaster the game can be. Mm. So that's number one, right? That's first young lady saying there's be so many ups and downs, but what keeps them going is the joy of the Lord. 
Happiness is dependent on circumstances, but what sustains them is the joy of the Lord. Okay, wonderful, glorious. Probably not what the ESPN uh, analyst was expecting, but that's just the first one. Here is young lady number two. 1,000% agree with Grace Lyons. Um, I went through that my freshman year. I I was so happy to win the college. I've talked about this before, but I was just so happy that we won the College World Series, but I didn't feel joy. I didn't have, I didn't know what to do the next day. I didn't know what to do for that following week. I didn't feel filled, and I had to find Christ in that. And I think that is what makes our team so strong is that we're not afraid to lose because if it's not the end of the world if we do lose. Yes, obviously we've worked our butts off to be here and we want to win, but it's not the end of the world because our life is in Christ and that's all that matters. <laughs> so, yeah, we enjoy winning, but if we win or we lose, our life is in Christ. That's what matters. You say we're easy to say as victors, but this is what's kept them going. This is what's kept them going. And obviously there's character building through losing. Sometimes when I hear a great Christian testimony, I think this person is going to lose. They're going to lose. I just have this sense they're going to lose in this big event, and that's going to develop their character even more. Right? So it's not just if you love Jesus, you always win. They're saying oh, quite the contrary. But if you love Jesus, you can always walk in joy. And then number three, here is young lady number three. Yeah. Um, I think a huge thing that we've really just latched onto is eyes up. And you guys see us doing this and pointing up, but we're really like fixing our eyes on Christ. And that's something where, like they were saying, you can't find a fulfillment in an outcome, whether it's good or bad. And um, I think that's why we're so steady in what we do and, and our love for each other and our love for the game, because we know this game is giving us the opportunity to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think once we figured that out and that was our purpose and everyone was all in with that, um, it's really changed so much for us. And I mean, I know myself, I, I've seen so much of a growth in myself with um, once I turned to Jesus and I realized how he had changed my outlook on life, not just softball, but understanding how much I have to live for, and that's living to exemplify the kingdom. And I think that brings so much freedom. And I'm sure everyone's story is similar, but we all have those great testimonies that have really like shown how awesome it is to play for something bigger. Um, and I think that's just what brings me so much joy. And no matter the outcome, whether we get a trophy in the end or not, we're, this isn't our home, and I think that's what's amazing about it is we have so much more. We have an eternity of joy with our Father, and I'm so excited about that. And, yes, I live in the moment, but I know this isn't my home, and um, no matter what, my sisters in Christ will be there with me in the end um, when we're with our, our King. So, Wow. Whoa. I mean, that literally brings tears to my eyes as a grandfather with four grandkids aged 16 to 22, the oldest just graduating from college, another in college, to hear the maturity, the clarity, the eloquence, the spiritual depth to what they're saying, and then to see God giving them a platform to share it. Hey, just another example of God at work in our midst, these young ladies shining for Jesus. Let the light of God shine in you as well.